Hi guys, Don Rice here, and I'm getting ready to solder a couple of big pieces of brass together, and uh, these are going to be, um, this is going to be a bracket that I will fasten somehow to the, uh, the engine cooling shrouds on the Corsair, and I, I know soldering seems to be a little bit of a black art for some people. Um, you can just see a little bit of the tinned area here. So I've got two pieces of brass uh, and before I clamp them together I went ahead and uh, put solder, heated the brass up and tinned the end of this piece of brass and uh, and on this side I tinned this end. So theoretically all I really have to do is heat these two pieces up together and the solder will melt them together. Um, I have also put, this is a, a type of flux, it's one I like to use uh, with with typical electronics type solders which is uh, like SN63 which is 63% lead, 37% tin and um, but in this case I'm going to be using something that's a little bit different. I don't actually know what the, the exact breakdown is of this solder. This is about an 800 degree solder, 700, 800 degree solder. It's got a little bit of silver content in it. Uh, and so it, it's, it's a stronger solder. And since this thing is going to be mounted uh, essentially directly to my engine, I thought I'd use something a little bit stronger. Anyway, I've been uh, playing around trying to get this thing jigged up somehow and so soldering iron and what I I always like to just hit it with a little bit of solder at the beginning try and keep that tip with a tin coating on it and um, ouch taut let's zoom in here And so I'll put just a little bit of solder right there on the tip and I'm just going to hold it flat on. Um, it's a pretty good sized tip. This is an 800 degree tip. No idea about the wattage. Um, and I will hold it on there and it's heating up all that brass right now. And at some point, that heat will transfer to this backside um, piece of brass. And enough heat will build up. I'll be able to see the solder that's on the brass start to melt. You can see smoke and stuff. That's from the flux. I've put flux down um, inside uh, in between these two pieces of brass. Oh, I can see it melting. There it goes. You see things starting to happen. And so now it's all pressed together. Um, it was, there was a little bit of a gap here from the um, imperfections and the smoothness of my soldering. Um, but now that all the solder is melted, uh, that gap is gone. I'm trying to see if I can get a little bit of this silver solder to melt and flow in there. But we've got to get things a bit hotter just want to keep things you know, don't want to let it cool back down until you get the flow that you're looking for and all I really care about is getting something to flow down in between these two pieces of brass There we go. 
The last little bit I do is I'll heat up at one end of the, the seam and slowly draw um, the pool of solder off to the edge. And so that leaves behind um, that leaves behind a nice clean fillet. Okay. So that being done, usually I let it cool for 30, 45 seconds. Uh, give it a chance to for everything to um, come down from the molten state into a solid state. Um, turn off the soldering iron, and then uh, you always want to you always want to put some solder, preferably tin lead. SN 63 onto your tip. It's the best kind of preservative. I just shake it off like that and even though it looks kind of dirty because of the flux it's got a nice little layer of tin um, protecting the tip from oxidation. I prefer that for tinning over any kind of silver solder. Okay, so um, all right. So this is 99% isopropyl alcohol. Little piece of um, paper towel. Things are obviously hot, but I use this to help wipe. This will help get the fluxes off. All right, so there we go. All right. We've got some flow in here on, the, on that seam. I can see a little bit of a fillet here. Probably could have gone around to the back side and heated this up to get flow. And I will probably, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that now just to make sure. I've got a good fillet here. Um, you can see a little bit of mess of solder here. This is where the tip was held during the preheating pro, um, process, which took, what, about a minute, minute and a half. Um, so ultimately that'll get, it'll fall off because it wasn't bound, bonded. Um, and, but once everything gets hot enough and you see things flow, then it becomes one with the, with the target. All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do some cleanup and then I can finish uh, the final shaping and deburring later. Okay, so I've got the part cleaned up now. And, uh, and basically the final shape is done. You can see uh, there's a fillet there at the, at the edge right there. And on the back side, we've got a fillet along there as well. And then well, we just hope that there's a, a good bond in the solder between the two layers of brass here. So... <clears throat> The idea here is that uh, this is my GT80. This is one of the engine shrouds that's going to catch all the air and um, direct it over the fins. Um, right now I've just got it taped in place, but what I am current my current plan is to install it right there. I'll have one bolt that'll thread into uh, the engine's motor mount and that'll hold it there. And then I might just bond it to this piece. This is uh, this piece is carbon. I molded up around the engine, bagged it. Um, and then uh, all I gotta do is figure out how to uh, bond it to the carbon to the the brass 
Maybe I'll just drill some holes in the brass and dump some 9462 high saw underneath it. Um, maybe I'll wrap some carbon fiber over the top. I haven't really figured that part out yet. Anyway, uh, so that is one of the engine cooling shroud mounting brackets. And I think I have about three more to make. Later.